Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. You're watching South Asia Newsline and here are the top stories we are tracking for you on Friday, the 4th of October. India's Jay Shankar visits Colombo, first high-level visit after President Desanayake's election. Activists at UN side event highlight rampant human rights abuses in Pakistan. And India, Nepal and Bangladesh see landmark power export D. And now for all the details. India's Foreign Minister S.J. Shankar on Friday arrived in Colombo for an official visit to the island nation. In a post on X, Sri Lanka's Foreign Ministry said Jay Shankar met his Lankan counterpart Vijita Herith discussing a range of matters of mutual interest. As part of his visit, Jay Shankar also called upon President Anura Kumara Disanayake and Prime Minister Harini Amara Suraya. It is the first high-level visit by any Indian leader after the recent presidential polls which elected the new President Anura Kumara Disanayake. The Marxist-leaning leader's political party, JVP, is traditionally considered close to China. However, Dissanayake has said the island nation under his governance will adopt a neutral foreign policy, not getting sandwiched between two Asian giants, India and China. Moving on, India on Friday slammed Pakistan in the United Nations meeting over measures to eliminate international terrorism which was held as a part of the 79th General Assembly session. In a statement, India's representative said India has faced horrors of state-sponsored terrorism even before the world took a note of it, highlighting the 2008 Mumbai attack, the 2016 Pathan Court air base attack and the 2019 Pulwama attack. The Indian diplomat in a veiled reference hit out at Islamabad and said motivated by their narrow political agendas, it looks for a reason to justify terrorism. Slamming Pakistan, she added, the government and agencies have made terrorism a state policy. Later in the meeting, India also exercised its right to reply after the Pakistani delegation raked up Kashmir and accused New Delhi of aiding separatist groups in Balochistan against Pakistan. In response, the Indian delegation said the region of Jammu and Kashmir is inalienable and integral part of India. Slamming Pakistan, the Indian diplomat further said it is ironic that Islamabad called themselves as victim of terrorism when its leadership from the floor of parliament calls face of global terrorism Osama bin Laden as martyr. It is unfortunate that some amongst us, motivated by their narrow political agendas, look for reasons to justify terrorism. Be because of these states, the global resolve to fight against terrorism gets diminished. Because of such states, even 15 years after the Mumbai terror attacks, the masterminds continue to roam scot-free with full state hospitality. Not only do such states justify terrorism, their governments and their agencies have made terrorism their state policy. The entire Union territories of German Kashmir and Ladakh were, are and always will be an integral an inalienable part of India, irrespective of what the representative of Pakistan believes or wishes. The bizarre assertions made by this delegation deserve nothing but contempt, certainly not a response. Let us not forget the fact that Osama bin Laden, the face of global terror, was found in this country. This country's leadership glorified him as martyr from the floor of parliament. And hours after the U.S. Commission on International Religious Freedom issued a report over religious freedom in India, New Delhi has labelled the organisation a biased organisation with a political agenda. The organisation in a report has alleged violations of religious freedom in India. In a seven-page report, the U.S. CIRF stated the religious freedom continues to deteriorate in India and added it was aided by the government through the enforcement of legislations like anti-conversion laws, cow slaughter laws and anti-terrorism laws. In a response, India termed the report malicious, which only serves to discredit the US CIRF further. 
In a sharp-worded statement, India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Randhir Jaiswal said, the USCIRF has continued to misprint facts and peddles a motivated narrative about India. He added that the organization should desist from such agenda-driven efforts and advised it to utilize its time more productively on addressing human rights issues in the United States. Moving on, human rights defenders in Geneva this week flagged concern over escalating human rights abuses in Pakistan, particularly targeting Pashtun and Baloch communities. A report. A group of human rights defenders gathered on Thursday for an event on the sidelines of the UNHRC session in Geneva to condemn the escalating human rights abuses in Pakistan, especially enforced disappearances and extrajudicial killings of Pashtun and Baloch activists to suppress dissent. Members of Baloch, Sindhi and Pashtun communities blame they are made targets of military operations and ethnic stereotyping in Pakistan. The situation is not highlighted by the local media forcing them to seek intervention through global platforms. Pakistan's undeclared war against the Baloch aims to crush all forms of resistance to its, to its occupation. Today, Pakistan operates several internment centers where thousands of Baloch, Pashtun, Sindhi, and Kashmiri individuals are held without trial. These centers are black holes of injustice where detain detainees endure inhuman torture and the loss of their dignity. The United Nations Declaration on the Protection of All Persons from Enforced Disappearances clearly states that such acts are offences against human dignity. And the Taliban's political deputy minister of foreign affairs, Sher Mohammad Abbas Tanikzai, has warned Pakistan over creating obstacles for Afghan traders, especially during the peak trading season for fruits and vegetables. Stanik Zai emphasized Afghanistan serves as a vital transit route between Pakistan and Central Asia. We could close our borders and cause them problems, but we do not wish to harm our Pakistani brothers across the border, he said. This is the first time that Kabul has suggested the possibility of closing Pakistan's transit route to Central Asia as a response to Islamabad's trade restrictions. Reports suggest the closure of trade routes has led to a 10% decline in Afghanistan's exports to Pakistan in the first five months of this year. The Turkham crossing has been closed several times in the past three years following border clashes between Pakistani forces and the Taliban. India, Nepal and Bangladesh on Thursday signed a trilateral agreement to trade 40 megawatts of electricity. The agreement signed in Kathmandu on Thursday now enables Nepal to sell electricity to a third country for the first time. Nepal only has been exporting electricity to India, its southern neighbour. The Indian side has also been involved in the trade deal as Nepal's electricity will be transmitted to Bangladesh through the transmission infrastructure in India. Nepal and Bangladesh are not territorially linked to each other. Nepal is estimated to sell 144,000 megawatt hour of electricity in five months, mid-June to mid-November, at the rate of 6.4 US cents a unit. The agreement was signed in the presence of Nepal's Energy Minister Deepak Khadka, Bangladeshi Minister Saida Rizwana Hassan, and India's Ambassador to Nepal, Naveen Srivastav. I am confident, therefore, that today's agreement between these three entities would boost power sector cooperation between Nepal, India, and Bangladesh. It would also signal to investors to invest in Nepal's hydropower sector because they would be assured of markets not just in India but also in Bangladesh now. The agreements signed today, therefore, would lead to greater energy security between our three countries. That's all in tonight's edition. We will see you same time next week. Have a great weekend. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.